Welcome to the Israel God's Bible study class on this Lord's Sabbath day in the ATL. Praise God. It's good to see everybody come out today. It is good for you to come out and deal with the word of the Lord God of Israel on the Sabbath day. Um, it's good being back home uh, among, the, among the family. Of course, all of us are family, no matter where you find yourself in the Israel of God. But, you know, there's always something special about home. So, the title of today's class is The Gospel Must Be Preached. Amen. It must be preached. And you are the ones that are supposed to do it. Because if you don't do it, it don't get done. One of the reasons why... We want to put a class together like this because as I've been traveling, there's different cultures in Israel. You know, we're all the same body, but we do things just a little bit different, okay? And we were in Carolina last week, and we used to going where nobody goes before. And that's the hood. Because you have to be the change agent if change is to take place. And we were telling some of the brothers and sisters there that, wow, you know, you got this place right here where it's a whole bunch of people there. And y'all can kind of help facilitate and bring those people down here. But all you got to do is go out there and talk to them. And one of the things I see is, I don't know if you want to call it fear or just a lack of a connection. Because some of us, you know, we move way out and then we haven't been in these places for a long time. So it's kind of like shock treatment when you come back. But these are the places that you see on the news every night. And it seems like this week, your children are taking guns to school every day. So if you're teaching in the camp, we're going to have to definitely pray for you real hard. Because <laughs> it seemed like every day this week, somebody's child at some different school was taking a gun to school. And the church has the power. We're going to show you that in the book. So you got power. You ain't just dealing with some fake God. See, your God different from the rest of the gods. See, the rest of the guys just take your money and throw you out. But you got some power when you deal with this book, if you deal with it the right way. And people will respect you. We're going to show you that. Amen. At the book. Amen. So gird up your lawn. And let's get ready to get in this book. Start with Matthew, the 24th chapter. And let's deal with it. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And let's look at the book and see... What's going to befall the people in the last days and some of the things that you have to look out for in these last days? If you've been reading your Bible, you already know that the bear, which is Russia, is making herself powerful. And you look at the Western nations, they don't know what to do with the bear. They say, well, where's the United States in prophecy? You see, she hooked herself up with the Western nations and they're going to meet with the east, and the battle is going to take place. See, that's in the book. The prophets told you that. See, that's why you don't have to be jumping around trying to figure out who God is. He tell you stuff before it happens. That's how you don't believe he's God. You know that he's God. Amen. Because can't nobody else's God do this. I don't care which ones you throw up. Buddha, you got to tow them around. Allah, he's stealing from the scriptures. And the other guys just want your money and just have a good time and drink and party. <laughs> Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and pick it up at verse 1. Let's look at the book and see what it say. 24 and 1. What it say, my brother? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Uh -huh. 
And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one one here stone, one here stone, here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, mm-hmm. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they asked him something in the future. That's prophecy. What the book say? And Jesus answered and said unto them, mm-hmm. Take heed that no man deceive you. So don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody flip you, brothers and sisters, because there are a lot of false prophets out here, and they will twist you, especially in Israel. So don't just go with the Sunday priest. You already know what they're coming with, but you got to deal with your Israelite brothers and sisters too. They'll flip you too. They'll have you walking out here telling you, saying you're calling on a pagan name, which you can't read nowhere in the book. Ask them, where is it written in the book? Chapter and verse. Make them sure they give you chapter and verse, okay? Old and new, where you can't use the name Jesus. Don't get caught up into, well, you know, in the English language and yada, 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 and all that stuff. That's just a side show. Get you off your mission. Amen. If your God can't keep the name straight, you don't need to be dealing with him anyway. He ain't got no power. Amen. Being that he confused the language in the first place. Amen. Talk to me, Israel. Amen. But if you don't read your book, you'll get flipped. What did the book say? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Come on. And shall deceive many. Come on. And ye shall hear, and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, he's telling you that you're going to hear these wars and rumors of wars. They didn't gave an edict. They said Monday they got to figure out if Ukraine is going to kick those people out and they're going to have civil war and they got to figure out if Russia, what they're going to do. Everybody looking at the bear, trying to figure out what is this man going to do. They said, well, we're going to kick him out of the, uh, the, the seven. Uh, he won't be no part of the G7, G8 nations. Uh, we'll get him financially. Well, the book said they can regard silver or no gold. <laughs> so he don't care nothing about that. You know why he don't care? Because the book say he don't care. Amen. Amen. What the book say? For nation shall rise against nation. Come on. And kingdom against kingdom. Come on. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Come on. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So these are just the beginning of your sorrow. So don't get shaken up. Don't get twisted. Amen. You got to hold on. What the book say? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Oh, Lord, not to be afflicted. You think just because your folks hollering at you now because you're telling them to keep the Sabbath day, you're going to be afflicted. Amen. Paul got bricks thrown upside his head. They don't tell you that in the church. What the book say? And shall kill you. Yes. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And you're going to be hated. All you got to do is go out there and take this book out there and read it anywhere. Just stand in the byways and highways and start reading and see how hated you are. But everybody loves Jesus. <laughs> go figure. What the book say? And then shall many be offended. Yes. And shall betray one another. Come on. And shall hate one another. Come on. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See, the false prophets are out there. They doing their job. They own their job. It's time for the church to come out the closet. Everybody else coming out. <laughs> Where you at? What the book say? And because iniquity shall abound, yes, the love of many shall wax cold. See, the iniquity, once sin increases and increases and increases, then the love just decreases. Decreases and decreases. But where is the church? Mm. Where are you? If anybody walked in the church and said, what is the church doing for the community? What could you say? What could you say? You should say, sit down for a minute if you got a few minutes, because I got a long resume I need to tell you about. <laughs> if you can't do that, that means that you need to be on your job. What the book say? 
But he that shall endure unto the end, come on, the same shall be saved. The same is going to be saved. So you got to endure all of this affliction. Once saved, always saved don't work. Because you can always turn back and go back to your vomit. Because the world is waiting on you Amen. to turn back. Your friends, your family members, they waiting on you to come back and eat the pork. They waiting on you to come back to the Christmas party. They waiting on you to come back and do fornication. Your boyfriend calling you left and right. Come on back home. <laughs> you know ain't nobody over there at that church. They ain't going to deal with you. Come on back to daddy. But don't you go. What the book say? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the gospel got to be preached just here locally in Atlanta. Mm -mm. Is that what the book say? Mm -mm. So if it got to be preached all over the world, and you are not all over the world, that means you got some work to do, don't you? Amen. That's a whole lot of work, ain't it? Amen. And the internet is good, don't get me wrong. But boots got to be put on the ground. Amen. That's what we in wars. We're going to show you that. Infantry. You can drop a bomb on it, but you ain't going to get everybody. Somebody got to go in there with a, a gun. On foot. Boots got to be put on the ground. You too, sister. You got to take them Evan McCone shoes off and the Michael Kors off and put you some <laughs> boots on. <laughs> We're going to show it to you. Christ looking for some soldiers. Amen. So the gospel got to be preached, right? Amen. Now we got to figure out what gospel. Okay? Because all gospels ain't the same. Paul told you that in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. They're going to come preaching to you another gospel. So we're going to let the book define what gospel got to be preached. Let's go to Mark chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 14. Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. And I'm going to show you when the Lord called you. Because a lot of people say, well, see, the Lord called me, brother, back. Did he? Which one? Paul said there'd be many lords and many gods. Was it the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that called you? If he did, then it should line up with the scriptures. I should be able to put a book in front of you, and you should not get scared like it's kryptonite. Hmm. Mark chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 14. Mark chapter 1 and 14. Pay attention to what the book say. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Notice what he say he came preaching, the gospel of the kingdom of God. What the book say? And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He said repent and do what? Did it talk about a financial blessing? When the last time you heard on TV the preacher telling you to repent? Not one time, I can tell you. I can answer that question. I don't care which show you look at. They tell you to hold your Bible up and say, this is my Bible. And he's smiling. You know why he's smiling? Because he's getting all of that money. He got the whole stadium filled. $90,000 a week. That's pimping. Big time. I call it what it is. What the book say? Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, yes, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. Come on, for they were fishers. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, "Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men." So, what is your job? What is your job? What are you supposed to be doing when you come to Christ? You supposed to be fishers of who? Men. A man. You priest of the Most High God. That's your job. What the book say? And straightway. They, they forsook their nets and followed him. And they left what they were doing and followed him. So when the Lord calls you, guess what you got to do? You got to leave what you got and follow him. Ain't that what Abraham did? What did the book say? And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Come on. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the higher servants and went after him. Wait a minute. They left their mom and dad? If you are not worthy of me, you got to leave your father, your mother, your children to follow who? Me. You got to make that decision. When he calls you, you got to go. What the book say? 
And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. So they went into the synagogue and taught the people. So when you leave the Israel of God, you're supposed to be what? Taught. Or when you leave any church facility that says they down with God, you're supposed to have some understanding. What the book say? And they were astonished at his doctrine. Come on. For he taught them as one that had, that had authority and not as scribes. See, we teach as one that have what? Authority. Do it look like we playing up here? Yeah, I'm going to drink some water, but you're going to get some book read to you. You understand? Now let's go to another spot. Let's go to Paul. So we see that the gospel that's supposed to be preached is the kingdom of God is coming and that you got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus to get in the kingdom. So that's the gospel that's supposed to be preached. Turn away from your wickedness, turn away from your sins, and return back to the true and living God. Amen. That's all you're supposed to read to the people. Bring them back to the laws and statutes of the Most High God. The Acts the 26th chapter, let's see if Paul taught the Gentiles or anybody else anything different because they're going to tell you that Paul brought something different from the other apostles in Jesus. But Paul told you something. Follow me as I follow who? Christ. Christ. And then Paul told you something else. Was I baptized for you? Did you baptize in the name of Paul, or did you get baptized in the name of who? Jesus. So you need to be following who? Jesus. Ain't nothing wrong with Paul. They just done twist his writings to their own destruction. Now, let's go to 26 of Acts and pick it up at verse 1. Then we're going to do a little skipping. This is when Paul was on trial. They wanted to kill Paul, so Paul said, I'm going to appeal to Caesar. So not only did he know the law in the book, he knew the civil laws too. Acts 26 and 1, what does it say, my brother? Then Agrippa said unto Paul, mm -hmm. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Yes. Then Paul stretched forth his, his, the hand and answered for himself. Skip down to 14 and what does it say? And, we, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, mm -hmm. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Go ahead. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Come on. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Yes. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Yes. To make thee a minister. To make thee a who? A minister. Now, you're now a minister, they don't flip that on you. See, you're supposed to come serve the minister. You're supposed to bring all your money to him, and he's supposed to be your little king. Minister means servant. Jesus said, he that is greatest among you shall be your what? Servant. So the minister is supposed to come and take care of you, not the other way around. What the book say? To make, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Come on. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Go ahead. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Come on. And from, and from the power of Satan unto God. So that's your job. You're supposed to turn the people from Satan. They're under the influence of Satan. That's why you see all the stuff going on on the TV. The people are under the influence of demons. These are demonic spirits. All you got to do is put your glasses on and then you can see them. Mm. They all out there. What do you think making the people do all this stuff? They said, well, you take them to the psychiatrist and load them up with drugs. That make them even more demonic. What the book say? That they may receive forgiveness of sin. Yes. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Come on. Whereupon, O King Agrippa. I was not disobe disobedient unto the heavenly vision, mm -hmm. but showed first unto, the, un unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent that they and should turn to God. That they should do what? Repent. So did Paul tell you anything different than what Jesus was preaching? Mm -mm. What the book say? Re and repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Oh, that got to be a error right there. It said works. Nobody want to do no works. But you're going to be saved by your what? Your work. Jesus said, I work and my father works. So you got to do some work too. 
What did the book say? For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Come on. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue until this day, witnessing both to small and great. So you're supposed to just witness to the old folk. Small and what? And great. I can't do nothing to these teenagers. Read that book on them. Get the demons off of them. What the book say? Saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. No, that's got to be an error. Paul came with a new doctrine. What you going to believe, the preacher or the book? Let's go to Matthew, the third chapter, and see what John the Baptist came preaching. And then we're going to show you why you got to repent. We're going to show you what happens in the heavens once this happens. The gospel must be preached under duress, under stress, under oppression. It doesn't make any difference. You got to get out there and do it. That's what you signed up for. Matthew 3 and 1. Matthew 3 and 1. What does it say, my brother? In those days came John the Baptist. Yes. Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Come on. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So they ain't even reading the New Testament, is it? How many times you done read that in the new books? We ain't even got to the old book yet. So that lets you know that they're not even reading the new book. Now skip down to verse 5 and see what it say after he got, the, got through preaching this gospel. What happened? Go ahead. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region of, round about Jordan. Yes. And were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. So once the book is read to the people, then the people feel bad and it pricks their heart. And then they turn to the true and living God. That's how it go. But somebody got to preach it to them in order for those things to happen. Now let's go show you what happens once this takes place. Let's go to Luke the 15th chapter. Luke the 15th chapter. And then we're going to show you how the Lord gives you his spirit so that you can deal with what he has to, for you to deal with. Luke the 15th chapter and pick it up at verse 1. We're going to show you what happens when a soul turns to the living God. The book is, everything is right here in the book. All you got to do is sit down and be patient and read a little bit. Luke 15 and 1, what it say, my brother? Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners. And eat it with them. Skip down to six. Skip down to seven and read what he say. I say unto you mm -hmm. that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Go ahead. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Skip down to ten and what it say. Likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So that's why you preach the gospel. Because once they repent. There's a joy, a happiness in the heavens. That's one less person God got to kill when he come back. Now, of course, you got to toe the line there. Don't think just because you done repented and you got baptized, you can skate on in. You still got to do your job because you can turn back and turn away from God. He still end up killing you. So this is like walking on eggshells. So now we know that the gospel got to be preached. We know what gospel is supposed to be preached according to the book. Now the Lord is going to give you the tools to take care of his business. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1 and pick it up at 22. Proverbs chapter 1 and 22. Because the Lord ain't going to leave you out here without any equipment. He is going to set his servants up for the battle because it is a war. That's wage, good and evil. Which side are you on? You can't straddle the fence because that's not good. 1 and 22, Proverbs 1 and 22, what it say, my brother? How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Uh -huh. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Go ahead. Turn you at my reproof. Yes. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Wait a minute. This ain't the book of Acts, is it? <laughs> I thought that the spirit came with the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. Mm. He said, turn at my reproof, at my correction, 
and I will pour this spirit out on you. We got to see what that is. What the book say? I will make known my words unto you. Oh, so that's what it is. I'm going to make my words known unto you. That's what you're going to speak to the people, the word of God. That's why you always got to have a Bible. That's why you shouldn't be talking without a Bible. You always have a Bible. I know you don't got sophisticated now. You got your little tablets and everything. But the battery going to die on that eventually. And if you're out in the street, he going to hit you in the head and take that. But he don't want this. <laughs> this is tested, tried and true. Mama used to hide money in this. Whole house come home and everything emptied out. You got 10,000 in the pages of the Bible and it is there. <laughs> it's the only thing in the house sitting there. And that money is in there, this is green. <laughs> in Mama's stocking. This book has power. What the book say? Because I have called and ye refuse. He said, I have called you and ye refuse. Notice that the sons of Jebedee, when he called them, they just left what they were doing, didn't they? And see, God get mad when he calls you and you don't listen to him. He get hot about that. What did the book say? I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. He said, I stretched out my hand to you. I'm begging you, come to me so I won't have to kill you because I'll kill you. What did the book say? But ye have said it not, all my counsel. He said, you have said it not, you won't listen to me. What did the book say? And with none of my reproof. Come on. I also will laugh at your calamity. He said, I'm going to laugh when you get in trouble. And that's when you call on the Lord. See, when you go to jail and they're booking you, God laughing at you. You know why? Because when somebody, when they sent somebody to you, you wouldn't come. Now you're in jail, you need some bail and some money on the books. I'm laughing at you now. Get out of this. <laughs> then you're crying to the Lord, don't you? And he's so merciful. He'll let mama put some money on the books. What the book say? I will mock when your fear cometh. No, go ahead. When your fear cometh as a desolation, mm -hmm. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Come on. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Come on. Then shall they call upon me. Then say the book is good. See the book telling you what the book telling you. What the book say? But I will not answer. He said, but I will not what? I thought God talked to everybody. I thought when you got down on your knees and prayed to God, he answered everybody. What do the book say? Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. So you obey, then I talk to you. Ain't that what you do with your children? Well, I don't know. You got a little soft now. But when they do right, you give them the car, don't you? You just make sure the insurance is paid up real high. But when they do wrong, you don't give them the car, do you? You guard the same way. What the book say? They shall seek me early. Yes. But they shall not find me. They shall seek me early and they shall not. That must be a typo. <laughs> I thought everybody that called on God, he listened to him. You better read this book and understand what you read. But he said, I'm going to pull my spirit out on you. I'm going to make my words known unto you. So if anybody say they're walking in the spirit, anybody say they got the spirit of God, then they should have a Bible. If they don't have a Bible, you got your false prophet or a false prophetess, Jezebel, within your ranks. And it's your job to correct it, to pull out your book. And even if you don't know no book, just shake it out. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Because what you find out, brothers and sisters, is that the people are scared of God. The people are going to be scared of you because you got your spirit. If you got the spirit of God on you, they're going to be scared of you. All you got to do is start talking. Talking about Jesus. You see what the false people do. They say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And then you start bagging up. Jehovah Witness come in your community. You be out there cutting the grass on the Sabbath day. Don't you just leave a lawnmower out there and run in the house? 
What you think that is? That's the fear. I remember I was standing over here in the community, people, people out there breaking themselves. They out there cutting the gray years. Mm, cat out there wandering around. Then I said, I don't hear the lawn mow no more. I said, first thing I said, Geo Witness in the neighborhood. <laughs> sure enough, they rang on my door back. Ding dong. <laughs> but see, that's the power that you got. And when they rang my doorbell, I stand behind the door. And I just open the door so they can't see it, so the door looks like it's opening itself. <laughs> I just stand behind it. And they said, is anybody home? Then I say, I'm behind the door, I said, good evening. <laughs> Come in. And they looking. Should we go in there? That's how you got to do it. You see? Isaiah 44 and 1, what does it say, my brother? Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, mm -hmm. and Israel, whom I have chosen. Yes. Thus said the Lord that made thee. Yes. And formed thee from the womb. See, the Lord done formed you. He knew you before you was formed in the womb. See, this is your job. This is what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you go to school, and half of you went to school for something that you ain't working in right now. Talk to me. You went to school, you went to school for plumbing or something, then you're doing something else, writing papers for somebody. <laughs> something totally opposite of what you went to school for. So you're outside of what you're really supposed to be doing. And it's something always nagging at you saying, I need to be doing something different. I need to be doing something else. That something else is this. <laughs> this is what you were born to do. This is why you came into the world. But you push it away because you want to hang with the girls, you want to hang with the fellas, and so on and so forth. You don't want to be you know, seen as different. But the book say you're going to be a peculiar what? People. People. So you are different. If you go back and retrace your life and think about all the times that God been trying to warn you and bring you into this truth. Think about that. He been sending people after you. Some of your parents been telling you, you know, you're going to be a prophet when you go back. You're going to be a preacher when you get me. Oh, no, I ain't going to be no preacher. I ain't going to be no preacher. I got to go to the club, get my drink on, girl. What you talking about? <laughs> oh, you're going to be a holy one. Oh, no, I ain't going to be no holy woman. No. no I got to shake it up, shake it down. That's the Lord sending them to you, warning you, telling you that I got a purpose for you. You don't have to read Purpose Driven Life. Okay? You don't have to read that to find out your purpose. You read this right here. This is your purpose right here. What the book say? Come on. And form thee from the womb which will help thee. Yes. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. He said, fear not, O Jacob, my servant. That's what you are, servants of the Most High God. What the book say? And thou, Jezron, whom I have chosen. Come on. For I will pour, I, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. He said, I'm going to pour some water on you. Do we think he's talking about grabbing some water and pouring it on top of your head? No. What are you saying, my brother? And floods upon the, the dry ground. Come on. And I will pour, out, pour my spirit upon thy seed. Yes. And my blessing upon thy offspring. So that's when you have children. You are building a nation. You are the nation of Israel. Amen. That's why he said you got holy seed. So you building a nation. Princesses and princes. Kings and queens, that's why you wear your crown, sister. That's a crown on your head. Oh, that's cloth on my hair. I got to get my hair, straight my hair out. That's your crown. So when they see you, they say, here come princes. Here come queens, so-and-so. But you're so busy worried about your hairstyle. You got to worry about what's on the inside. Beauty from within. Because no matter how beautiful you are, if your attitude is bad, you are in bad shape. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Amen. You ready to get it from me, right? The book says, speak truth to your neighbor. He said, I'm going to pour some water on you, you my chosen. I'm going to pour my spirit upon you. So we see that the spirit has been poured on Israel long before the book of Acts, don't we? Amen. 
I want you to read that to somebody, okay, next time you run into them, okay? What the book say? Come on. And they shall spring up as among the grass. Yes. As willows by the water courses. Come on. One shall say, I am the Lord. Yes. And another shall call him himself by the name of Jacob. Yes. He, said, a, he said, once this spirit is pulled on you, you're going to realize who you are. Your conscience is going to go to the next level. You're going to realize that your name is no more Leroy Jones. Your name is Habakkuk Israel. Son of the Most High God. Amen. Jesus. So what we're doing is fulfilling what? Prophecy. Because the Lord said, my word will not come back void unto me. So if he wrote it that you're going to change your name from Jacob and you're going to surname yourself Israel, that means somewhere down in the future because this was written in 740 B.C., 2700 years ago, and now it's being fulfilled. The Lord has looked down into the future and saw that, hey, you ain't no more Leroy Jones, baby. You are Habakkuk Israel. You are embracing the people. You are one that embraced the brothers and sisters. You are Leah. You are Jacobs. You are Abrahams. See, we the bad generation that came along. If you think about it, all of the songs that you call Negro spiritual sing about Israel. But they flipped the script on you and gave you gospel. So you were singing about back home, rocking my soul in the bosom of what? Abraham. Coming for to carry me home. Carry you home where? Back to Zion. That's where you going? Did we finish that? Come on. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. Yes. And surname himself by the name Israel. That's why we are Israelites. That's what we are. A nation of people that God has chosen to preach the gospel to every living creature. And nowhere you read it, old or new, it's the same thing. Now, Amen. let's go to Acts 2. Let's go to the Pentecostal chapter. Because they say, well, look, you're in the Pentecostal church now. You're holy. You got to wear all white. You can't wear no, you got to wear your stockings, baby. But you're supposed to be holy anyway, don't you? But see, when they don't have no understanding, they chop the word of God up. See, everybody got a piece of the word of God, and they done took it and claimed it. Pentecostal, they done turned that into a, a church. <laughs> well, it's the feast day. <laughs> One a minute. But when you don't have no understanding, this is what you get. So we see that God going to pour his spirit upon his people. And then they are going to do something when he put his spirit upon them. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 and pick it up at 14. What does it say? Peter talked to the people. Notice that Peter read the scripture to the folk. He coming out the book of Joel. What does it say, my brother? But Peter... Standing up with the eleven, uh -huh. lifted up his voice and said unto them, Yes, ye men of Judea, yes. and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, mm -hmm. be this known unto you, Come on. and hearken to my word. Come on. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. So Peter said, Look, we ain't drunk. You know Israel get up drinking, don't they? You know we got them packet stoves in that neighborhood, don't they? About eight of them before you get to the block. You got packet stoves in churches. Drunk spiritually and drunk physically. <laughs> drunk. <laughs> what did it say? But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last days. He said in God. the last days. You in the last days. So what's going to happen in the last days? Didn't we just read in Isaiah where he said, I'm going to put my spirit upon you and your seed? So ain't we the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Amen. What the book say? I will pour out of my, sp my spirit upon. Come on. All flesh. And how many flesh? All. So sisters, you get out there and prophesy too. And the children too. Children. You know about Lil Wayne, you can quote his stuff. Quote this book. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. You listen to too much radio, you need to be reading. What the book say? 
And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. See, that's why your children, they go to school, they bring their little friend with them. They little friend. They say, well, come on, you know, you bring, well, they want to know why you, why you wearing your head cover. Are you a Muslim? No. Come on to class. And you see them bring, the children, bring, bring their little friends to class, you know. So that's what you're supposed to do. What the book say? And your young men shall see vision. Yes. And your old men shall dream dreams. Come on. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. See, when you pour, when the spirit is poured out on you, then you're supposed to do what? Did it say you're supposed to jerk and jump and flip over the table? Did it say that? You're supposed to do what? Prophesy. Read the book to the people. That's what God has given you the gift to do, to read to somebody, to show somebody about the Sabbath day, to show somebody that they need to stop eating pork so that they can get off the blood, pre blood pressure medication. If you just bag up off of it, you will be straight. That's the first thing the doctor takes you off of. He said, we got to take you off that pork and greasy food. Because it's greasy. All my fat back sitting up in there. <laughs> it's just floating to the top. Grease. Look like an oil spill. <laughs> and you right there saying, give it to me, baby. This is so good. And that pie got so much sugar in it, you be floating after you eat it. Lift it up. And you eat so much meat, you just say, I got to go lay down. <laughs> Ooh, that is so good. Lord have mercy. And notice when you do it, right after church. <laughs> but see, you're supposed to be light, agile, Amen. ready to fight, yeah. jumping rope, yeah. climbing trees. Yeah. You're supposed to be like Mayweather. <laughs> You're supposed to be ready to go. <laughs> Somebody asked me, they said, Brother, back where you at? Somebody here walking. They said, You walk? I said, Yeah. Is how many miles you walk? I said, I walk five miles, baby. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. I don't see how you do it. Bag up from that table. <laughs> That's how you do it. So he said, Look. I'm going to pour out my spirit on you, and you're going to do what? You're going to prophesy, but did we just read that in the book of Acts, or did we read that in the prophets? Okay, so now, now that he poured his spirit out on you, now you got to go do something. Let's go to Psalms, the 94th chapter. People say, well, Brother Becca, I love reading the Psalms. They just make me feel so good, and I get my daily devotion. So when you be on the train, you hear all this stuff, you know. I just get my daily devotion. I said, well, have you read this one right here? Psalm 94 and 14. Psalm 94 and 14. Psalm 94 and 14. What did it say, my brother? For the Lord will not cast off his people. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I thought, I thought the church took over. I thought the church took over on the day of Pentecost. The book said the Lord will not cast off his people. What the book say? Neither will he forsake his inheritance. Come on. But judgment shall return unto righteousness. Come on. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. Come on. Who will rise up for me against the evil doer? He said, who going to rise up for me against the who? Somebody got to stand up for righteousness. Amen. Somebody got to tell them what the book say. Amen. Who going to do it? You scared? We're going to show you that too. Because if you're scared, God going to get you too. See, he got you left and right. Because you can't be scared. Especially when you're dealing with Israel. We're going to show you how to deal with Israel. We're going to show it to you. We're going to show you how the prophets dealt with them. What the book say? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And who will stand up against the workers of iniquity? Who going to tell the sister she got to put some clothes on? Who going to tell her? Who going to tell the brother he got to pull his pants up? You're tired of seeing the bullet holes. <laughs> Who going to tell him? 
What the book say? Unless the Lord had been my help. Come on. My soul had almost dwelt in silence. See, you need the Lord to help you when you go out here and deal with Israel. Because that's going to be your first battle. That's the first nation you got to go to. I'm going to show you that. But who is going to do it? Who is going to do it? And if you don't do it, the Lord going to get you. I'm going to show you that too. Now let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 7. See, it's old and new, old and new. If they don't speak according to this, if they don't sit down and read this Bible to you, if they talk to you about 20 minutes, they don't have no Bible, you get your coat, you get your hat, you get your children, and you run up out of there. Okay? And then you'll keep some money in your pocket. you have all your money. You won't have to worry about your pockets being flipped inside out. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 7. The Lord said, who going to stand up against the evildoers for me? I know there's nobody say that. Second Timothy chapter 1 and 7, what the book say? For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Wait a minute now. So you can't operate with God and operate with what? Fear. You got a problem with that? You got to be bold. What the book say? But of power. Yes. And of love. Come on. And of a sound mind. He said you got to have some power. You got to have some love. And you got to have your mind strapped up right if you're going to deal with this thing. What the book say? Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So you don't be ashamed of God? You tell him, yeah, I deal with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I need to be off this Sabbath. I got to take care of some business. What did the book say? Nor me his prisoner. Come on. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Wait a minute. They didn't say it come with no affliction, did they? They just told you to come to Christ, didn't they? But it comes with some afflictions. What did the book say? Who has saved us. Yes. And called us with a holy calling. Come on. Not according to our works. Yes. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I told you he called you before the world even began. That's why you're sitting in here. Why do you think you're sitting in here? Because you've been called. You've been chosen. Amen. But this was done before the world even began. Before you came out your mother's womb. You was ordained. You didn't have to go to the cemetery to get your papers. You were already given it. Amen. So now, let's go to Proverbs, the 28th chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Proverbs, 28th chapter. So will you, once you get this spirit poured on you, then you are ready to go. But you can't be scared. You got to be able to move with inside the society. And you got to be able to do like Paul said, be all things to all people. So now, Proverbs 28 and 1, we're going to read one verse. Proverbs 28 and 1. 28 and 1. What does it say, my brother? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Come on. But the righteous are bold as a lion. So the righteous are supposed to be what? Bold. bold. So you're supposed to speak boldly about this thing. Don't let nobody twist you, turn you. You stand on the word of God, that rock that you're supposed to be trusting in. Now, let's go see what your God is. Because your God, they said Jesus loved everybody, but we're going to give you the flip side of that. Let's go to uh, the 15th chapter of Exodus. Exodus the 15th chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Exodus the 15 and verse 1. Exodus 15 and verse 1. And then we're going to read verse 3 and show you the other side of your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Hebrews. Amen. That's the one you want to deal with. Not these pagan gods. They can't help you. You're still over here in this captivity, ain't you? Got these Egyptologists talking to you, telling you metaphysics. Got you floating off, telling you you ain't real. Pull out your knife and walk up on him and like you're going to stick him. If he jump back, you know he's real. <laughs> I was at the bus stop one time. Jake told me, he said, he said we God. I said, man, it's 20 degrees out here. Make it warm. <laughs> I 
I'm out there with a big old coat on, waiting on the bus. About to freeze to death. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, early in the morning with that father. <laughs> he out there with me. You guard, you're supposed to be able to take jump from one place to another. You doing it standing out here with me. <laughs> he couldn't make it warm, so we figured that out. He still got to wait till summertime just like I do. Because the book says it's going to be seasons in it. Just stick with the book. Stop listening to Israel. They foolish. 15 and 1. What did it say, my brother? Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The, the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Now, we're going to show you something about that singing, too, later on. In the class. We're going to show you about that. That's some power too. We're going to show you that. Skip down to verse 3 and what the book says. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of what? Of war. I want you to remember that. Your God is a man of war. What the book say? The Lord is his name. The Lord is his name. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 1. Since your God is a man of war. This is talking about military, ain't it? You didn't even know that was in there, did you? It, they done made Jesus so nice and puffy. You know, he got his nice hair. You see him on the TV. <laughs> what did the brother say here? Malibu Jesus. <laughs> like he getting ready to go surfing. But see, that's what the movies do to you. You see what I'm saying? That's how they depict it. So you're supposed to be looking mad. Eyes supposed to be red, scowl on his face. All you got to do is go to the zoo, look at a lion. You look at him, he ain't playing, is he? <laughs> I went to the zoo, I looked over there in the lion cage. I was glad he was way over on the thing. And he started roaring. I said, ooh, Lord, have mercy. That's Jesus right there. <laughs> Everybody in the zoo can everybody in the zoo was looking around. Elephants, they stopped. They were throwing a little dirt up. They stopped, looked around. I said, yeah, boy. Ooh, these folks don't know what's gonna happen to them. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's something. Go to the zoo. Take your kids there. Take them over there to the cage. You push them up real close. <laughs> so come here, Judah, come here. Come here, Judah. <laughs> Get up there on that cage. You see that right there? You obey my man. They had a line. So come over here and roll at them. They go home. They be washing the dishes, sweeping the floor. <laughs> Fear is the beginning of what? That's what your God wants you to do. He wants you to fear him. Then you'll do what he say. People respect you when, you, when they fear you. 2 Timothy 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. What does it say, my brother? Thou therefore, my son, yes. be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Come on. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Come on. The, sa the same commit thou to faithful men. You say commit this thing to what type of men? Faithful men. Not men that's going to be dealing with filthy Luther. Faithful men. Men that's going to stand up for the word of God. Men that's going to take care of business. That's what you want. Faithful men and women. What the book say? Who shall be able to teach others also. Wait a minute. Who should be able to what? Teach others what? Also. Didn't he just get through telling who's going to stand up for the evildoers? Who's going to go up against the evildoers from it? Who's going to tell the workers of iniquity that they got to stop? The faithful men and women going to do that, and they able to teach others also. Amen. What the book say? Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Didn't God just tell you I'm a war? I'm a God of war? I'm a man of war? So who do you think that God is talking about? That's the Jesus. That's the Christ. That's the one that's going to come in the last days and set the kingdom upon this earth. But he's looking for soldiers. Soldiers. This is a warfare. What the book say? No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Come on. That he may please him who hath chosen him. To that you may himself. please your what? Please him. Did it say please yourself? Mm -mm. It said please him that has chosen you. 
When did he choose you? From the foundations of the world. What the book say? And if a man also strive for mastery, yes. yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. All right. So he said you are good soldiers and you are soldiers for Christ. That's what you are. Now, let's go deal with the first nation that you got to go up against. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 1. Because we read earlier where he said you're supposed to preach this gospel to how many nations? All of them. And your first nation that you're going to go to, guess who that is? Israel. And guess where Israel at? In the hood. The place where no man goes. <laughs> and we're going to read Ezekiel. And I want you to picture this as we read it and think about Israel as we read this. Okay? It's almost like it's a definition and have a picture next to it when you read it. Two and one, Ezekiel two and one, what does it say, my brother? And he said unto me, Yes, son of man, mm -hmm. stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Come on. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. Now he said the spirit entered into it. See, they'll tell you, see, that's the that's the spirit. That's something else that's gonna enter into you and make you do what you're supposed to do. The only thing that entered into him was what? The word. What the book say? And set me upon my feet. Yes. That I heard him that spake unto me. Come on. And he said unto me, uh -huh. Son of man. Yes. I send thee to the children of Israel. Yes. To a rebellious nation. What type of nation? Rebellious. They won't pull up their clothes. <laughs> they won't put on no clothes. They want to walk around what? Naked. What the book say? To a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. Come on. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Come on. Even unto this very day. They doing it right now. What the book say? They are an impudent children. Yes. And stiff hearted. Come on. I do send thee unto them and thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. Come on. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are, are a rebellious house. Go ahead. Shall, yet. Shall, shall know that there had been a prophet among them. He said, when you go to Israel, they're going to rebel against you. But whether they will hear you or whether they won't hear you, they're going to know that a prophet has been among them. So you might not get no one-day conversion when you're dealing with Israel. It may take a process of time. So don't get too excited when your parents and your husbands and your spouses and all these different people kick against you. Sometimes they're watching you to make sure you're straight. Amen. To make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Because they know where you came from. They know you was over there in the pot getting that grease that was sitting into the top of it. What the book say? And thou, son of man, yes, be not afraid of them. Be not a what? Be afraid. not afraid of them. So you can't be afraid when you're dealing with the word of God. What the book say, my brother? Neither be afraid of their word. Yes. Though briars and thorns be with thee. Yes. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Come on. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So they're going to look at you crazy. So when you go in there to preach that gospel... And they start looking at you crazy. What you supposed to do? Look crazy back at them. <laughs> That's all you got to do. I remember we was down here. Um, we was down in Houston. And we were walking down the street. And we saw these apartments. So I said, well, I told you how. I said, man, let's go over to these apartments, man. To see what's over here. So we walk over there. We see a little lady standing out front. They were standing on the outside of the apartment, and they were selling cans. You know, so the people coming outside the apartment, the apartment got these big raw iron gates in them, you know. And uh, so they say, um, so the lady's selling cans, and we walk past them, right? So I said, um, I asked her something. I can't remember what I asked her. But then she said, she said, y'all getting ready to go over there in the apartments? I said, yeah. We getting up. No, we had a fly. That's what it was. We had a fly, she looked at it, and she said, y'all getting ready to go over there in the apartments? I said, yeah, we getting ready to go over here. She said, well, uh, a lot of people go in there, but a lot of people don't come out. 
<laughs> so I knew what we were operating with. This is Satan using her to scare us. But we rebuked that spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we went in there anyway. And I said, well, Daniel, we may not, we going in, we may not come out, but we going in.